Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Block and Key by Inside Up Games. Block and Key plays one to four players, takes about 20 to 40 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And you are going to be an adventurer in a 2D and a 3D realm. You'll be taking blocks and trying to create massive sculptures to score key cards. You're also going to have this uh, unique card at the end of the game. It will score you bonus points if you're able to accomplish a certain number of colors in front of you and your objective is to gather as many key cards as you possibly can. These are basically objectives that you'll need to complete by looking at your specific perspective based on your side of the board as you place blocks down. On your turn you'll be either gathering blocks or placing a block and trying to complete as many of these cards as you can. Depending on the number of players will determine how many key cards you need to complete in which case one more round will get thrown through the mix and you'll count your points up including your special enigma card and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Let's take a look at the game down below. I'll show you how it's played in both its 2D and 3D perspective and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. So here is the game Block and Key from Inside Up Games. And I went ahead and partially set it up so that I can show you the full process of setting up the game board and everything included. Uh, you're going to have these Enigma cards here. There's four of them in total and they have four different colors. And these cards are basically going to score you one point for every three of that specific color facing you at the end of the game. You'll take these cards up and depending on the number of players, you will shuffle them up and then you will deal out one to each. And I'll just go ahead and deal them out just like so, so that everybody's gonna get a card. You're also going to be getting blocks and there's four different colors. There's a white, there is gonna be gray, there's going to be brown, and there's going to be green. You'll put them all into a bag, draw them out of the bag and place them in these spots here. Each spot is going to have a number associated with it and there are a total of nine slots with a total of nine uh, different types of pip locations. So this is a nine, this is a one, one, two, three, and it goes on and so forth. Uh, you're also going to get a starter block and I'll explain how that works when I go ahead and place the top portion of the board up. And of, of course you're also going to be getting three different uh, key cards here. These are the easy ones which is going to start off with two for every player. So you'll shuffle them up and deal out two to every single player here. And then you're going to have the sun and moon cards. You'll give one sun to every single player and you're going to give one moon to every single player. Moon are the most difficult of the different types of cards to try and gather. They score you the most points in the game. And whenever you play these cards by collecting the objective, you can choose between either of these two stacks. Once you've gone ahead and give everybody four objective cards as well as their enigma card, then you're going to go ahead and take the top of the box and you're going to place it on top here so that it's going to fit in uh, to securely fashion that 2D experience for the players. And you can pretty easily go ahead and fit this guy on them. This is a prototype, so it will probably be different in the main portion of the game. But as you can see, we now have our full 3D style. We're using the bottom of the box here, and we'll be using the top of the box here. Uh, in the game, depending on the number of players, is where you're going to be placing the starting block. However, you'll need to place the gold sides um, on the bottom and the top. And if you're playing a two-player game, you'll place it here, a three, and a four-player here. And based on what number of players is what sides you'll be utilizing. In a four-player game, you'll literally place it right in the middle, uh, and the person who starts will go ahead and select which way they want this to be facing. And they'll check their Enigma card to determine which is best for them. Most likely they're gonna go ahead and do that. So in this case here, we have uh, the white. So they're probably gonna go ahead and place uh, the white in front of them. And then every player clockwise of the first starting player will gather three. And when you gather the specific car or the specific block tiles, you're going to be gathering them in either column or row. Uh, this is a row and this is a column. So starting with the player on the player's right, they'll gather a column and this will be their pool. You can have a total of seven cards in a pool here. And then when you do gather, I'll randomly draw these from a bag, pretend like they're random, you'll place them from the lowest numbered pip to the highest number, which makes them kind of randomized. And everybody will do that. So maybe the next player will take these three, in which case you'll draw three new ones from the bag and place them down. This player over here will gather these ones here. And then once again, rinse and repeat up until the point where every single player has gathered three of these tiles here, three of these uh, blocks, I should say, tetrominoes. Then you're going to go ahead and begin the game with the starting player, or the player who chose their three blocks last, the player who selected this location here along with its orientation. 
and their objective is to take one of two actions. Action one is they can gather, like I showed you previously, a column or a row by collecting three of these blocks and uh, placing them in front of them with a total of seven. If they ever draw any more, they have to put them back into the bag. And option two is placing a block out. Uh, there are two different ways you can place blocks out. One way is you can place a block adjacent to another block like this. Whenever you place adjacent to a block or blocks, you always have to make sure that the block you're placing is at least one block higher than the block you're placing it next to. So uh, in this case here, it's one uh, space higher, right? Um, however, uh, if you wanna place it kitty corner or to the side here, there is no rules. It just needs to be placed uh, next to it. You can go ahead, they don't have to be one block higher or not. And then of course, the other thing you need, you can, you can note, uh, you can make bridges too. And uh, bridges have to be built correctly. They have to make sure that there's no sides overlapping. And in this case here, you can see that there's no sides uh, going over. So if there's one, if it was like, you know, if it was, if it was something like this, place like that, you wouldn't be able to do that. And so that's pretty much the idea of it. You're gonna be gathering up to three of these guys, refilling them, and then you're going to be placing them down onto the board in one of the two ways following the rules and guidelines of the game. And you'll pass. So do one of those two things and then pass. Um, if you play one down and you actually ma manage to gather an objective, then you're going to play those objectives, one or two or more if you can, into your place field that will score you points at the end of the game. So let's go ahead and look at a player's perspective. And I went ahead and moved the starting block a little closer so that you guys can see it on camera. But generally speaking, it's gonna be in one of the three spots based on the number of players. This specific player is looking to gather white. And for every three white in front of him where he's facing, where you currently see, will score him one point at the end of the game. Uh, he's also going to have uh, four cards in hand, and these are the cards that they're gonna get, and uh, you're gonna be trying to complete these. And they can be rotated in any way, but they cannot be mirrored, so they cannot mirror certain cards. Uh, but for the most part, you're gonna be able to design, design them how you would like. And on his turn, he's gonna have one option to take. He already has gathered his uh, three pieces here, so he's gonna go ahead and try and place down one of them. And he's gonna go for, let's see here, let's go for this one here. And as you can see, he needs two brown and two white. Uh, so he can go ahead and make this in two different ways. Uh, one way is he can place a kitty corner. Now, as you can see, uh, this has to be placed kitty corner because it is the same height. This one is not one higher. So this would be an illegal move, but this would be legal. Uh, meaning that when he tries to score this, he will be able to do so because he sees two there and he sees two there. And as you guys can probably see in, the, in your perspective how that works. However, maybe he had this one instead. If he placed this perhaps right there. Uh, he also has two there and he has uh, two there. You ignore all the rest of the blocks. Those are not relevant for this specific card. And he or she would score this card here, which is worth one point at the end of the game. Whenever you play your key cards, you'll be able to gather new ones from the bottom area and you'll be putting them into your hand. These moons here are extremely challenging. And then the sun ones are kind of a mid-level. And that's it. He placed one of his blocks. He gathered as many key cards as he could have. And if he actually could have done another one, maybe he had another one of the opposite type of this, he could play both of them. And then the next player would get a chance to go and they would gather their bricks from the bottom or place one on top here and so on and so forth up until it's this player's turn again. And let's say now that it's this player's turn and this player wants to do this one here. Well, the first thing he's probably going to want to do is maybe gather this one and maybe he'll place it right let's see maybe he'll place this one kitty corner like that and then on his next turn he can place this behind it because this is too higher than this one which is perfectly fine in which case he can rotate this and as you can see he's able to score this one here for one point because he's got two brown here and he's got two gray up above. In which case he'd draw another card and continue the game. And like I said, in a four player game, there's a certain number of cards that are going to be dropped down. Once, uh, once I believe it's seven cards are dropped down from all players cumulatively, everybody gets one more turn and the game will then end. And you'll score points for every card that you played. In this case, you've got two here worth one point. And then you're also gonna score one point for each of the three uh, colors uh, uh, from the, your specific objective. So in this case, if he had played this here as well, he would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, divided by three is two, scoring him two points.
And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Let's go up and talk about it now. So let's discuss the game Block and Key. And the first thing that I want to talk about this game is that it has visual and spatial reasoning. You're going to be gathering blocks in columns or rows from the bottom portion of a 3D board. And then you're going to be placing them down onto the top of the board to create a spatial skill, a spatial like objectives. There are these key cards and they're going to have certain requirements. And based on the rules in which you associate placing the blocks down, down, you're then going to look in a 2D perspective to try and gauge if you did that correctly. And when you do, you can score one, two, or maybe even three cards uh, from your keys. Uh, of course, now, generally speaking, you'll score one of them, but it's possible to score more. In fact, my wife did. She's very good at these games. It's also interesting to note, too, that you're only looking at one perspective of the four different sides, and depending on the number of players is how many different sides of the board you're going to be utilizing, and how many points that you can score with your unique, specific Enigma uh, objective in the game. This game here has some really cool and interesting mechanics. The first one being that you can place kitty corner and usually that works, but as the board gets more filled, you start having to think about how you need to place blocks on top of other blocks. You can only have a block a total of six feet high or six little notches high. And so when you're crafting, you're gonna to have to envision that. Some blocks are gonna be easier to stand than others and how you place them is going to really, really matter in this game. Uh, this game is of course a puzzle game that you're also envisioning uh, in a 3D plane, a 2D space which is really cool. Another thing to note too, which I actually really liked, is the fact that uh, my wife's game Moonshell and Mermaid game is coming out soon, and this one here utilizes one side of the board, just like in that game, and your placing, and how you place on your side of the board will affect other players on their side of the board and their perspective of how they see things. You might be in unintentionally scoring them points by giving them certain colors based on how you place the blocks, which is really unique and interesting, and I like that aspect too, because I haven't seen a lot of games do this, uh, hers included in that matter, so it's a slight plug, but also because these games do share some similarities. They're both puzzle games and they also both involve uh, visual and spatial reasoning as to how you place things down, which is just really cool. So I wanted to mention that. Uh, the artwork for the game is excellent. It reminds me of like ruins, like you're an ar archaeologist or architect going out of your way to collect and build these stone structures to collect these key cards and then play them out based on how you place. What's also really unique too is if you see an objective that you've completed but it wasn't you who did it, it's not going to count. It only counts when you actually place the block down in front of you with one of those bricks or more of them uh, being part of the objective you need to complete. So if you need a two by two that's both white and gray, but somebody else placed it when it wasn't on your turn, you don't score that. You have to actually make your objectives count by you placing them, which is another interesting little little tidbit for this game. There are objective cards and there's three different values. Uh, one of them being the stars. You only get two of them at the start of the game. Afterwards, you junk the rest. And if you're playing with four players, you utilize all of them. And then you're only gonna be gathering medium and hard objectives throughout the game the sun and the moon. Sun being the more medium ones, moon being the more difficult ones. Of course, moon will give you more points, but it's a little bit more of a risk. And what I've noticed in this game too is personally for me, I wouldn't want to gather as many moons. I'm going to go more for the suns because they're easier to gather and they, the, the, the reward isn't really worth the risk specifically for me. Um, but if you're really good at puzzle games, it probably will be. You'll probably be able to make do and gather more points with one brick, utilizing it with not only your secret objective, but also with the requirements you have for the moon being able to complete it as opposed to with me or the sun where it's a little easier to do. I can see that. And I guess that also comes into the play with the fact that this game, as you play it, the better you get with the reasoning skills that you develop and the easier it is to place down bricks and know where they're going to go and how they're going to go. I also like the fact that you can't really look at other players' boards, but when you do, it's because you have to see if they've actually scored their points or not. So you'll deduce whether they did it right and then you'll learn from them as well. So as they place down blocks, you'll go, oh, wait a second, I see how you did that. Now I know how to utilize that for my next objective. Just little baby tips as to how you connect certain blocks and where you place them, building bridges and whatnot. You'll start seeing how unique and interesting these different strategies come into this game and how you can manipulate these blocks. Uh, it's very straightforward, very simple. You have blocks and you have some cards and then you make the board into a 3D design. But the replayability comes in the form of how you place the blocks and what type of objectives you get and when you get them. Another thing to note too is the number of players. Uh, the board gets crazy with a, number, with a lot of players. When you're playing with four players, there's a ton of blocks everywhere. Your placement starts mattering a little bit more and it gets a little more frantic. And then with a two-player game, you're more worried about what that opponent's secret objective is, how many points 
that you're giving them when you're placing that down because in one game I, I scored like six points for my objective where Cali only scored two and that makes a huge difference because the cards range in value from like one to about maybe three or four points so you can net yourself two or three cards in victory points just from your Enigma card alone. A quality designed game really really nice. Uh, one little caveat which is this is a prototype copy and I acknowledge that so I imagine it'll be changed. Uh, the yellow Tie pieces here are actually, I believe, white, and the gray ones are, are gray, but on the cards, uh, the white and the yellow don't match, so I imagine that's going to be fixed. I'm not going to have a huge criteria about that, and I imagine it's probably been already said before, and they probably know that, but eh, it's some little nitpicks, I suppose. Overall, though, if you like puzzle games, spatial reasoning, 3D and 2D perspectives, and a little bit of this, like, objective hunting type, type of games, uh, you're going to enjoy this one. The fact that you can gather specific uh, blocks based on your columns or rows makes you never sure which ones you're going to gather uh, to utilize all the time. Sometimes you might need two of the three or only one of the three and you have to find a way to utilize the other two um, and if you if you can't you're going to be in a little bit of trouble so you have to kind of manipulate them as best as you possibly can and make it worth your scoring value. Anyway, this game is excellent. If you really enjoy puzzle games, this is one that I would highly suggest to you. I'm excited to see what other stretch goals and unique little pieces of content that they have for the game because right now, this is an instant buy just specifically because I know Callie loves these type of games and this is one that I'm going to see hit the table quite a bit of time, which means I'm also going to lose uh, a lot more when we play games for the next coming weeks. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Block and Key. If you're interested in picking this game up, it's currently on Kickstarter and the link is down below in the description where you can go ahead and purchase the game if you're interested. You can also go ahead and check out my wife's game, Moonshell and Mermaid Game. It's coming out March 2nd. And if you like games like this one, uh, you're probably going to actually enjoy her game as well. I think they fit a lot of the same criteria and audience because of the fact that they're so lightweight but have so much variability and versatility. Uh, definitely check out that one as well. You can also go ahead and check out my YouTube channel. If you're not already there, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button. You'll be able to see more of our videos every single day we put out a video, except for, I believe, Sundays. And you can also go ahead and check out our Discord and, of course, our website. We have a ton of contests in Discord, and we also have stuff going on the website. New reviews, interesting more commentaries and blogs. We have giveaways, stuff that you guys will only be able to see on the website. They have different pieces of content there. Anyway, guys, thank you you so much for watching thank you patreons for backing us and supporting us on our live stream as well it helps us be able to send out games for giveaways and all kinds of stuff to do with you guys which is a lot of fun and uh, i look forward to seeing you guys on there uh, wednesdays at 6 30 p.m pst all right guys thank you so much for watching and as always i look forward to building some clay blocks with you next time